Welcome to Prayer and Bible Band Lesson 11. Today's topic is God's presence and purpose in your life. The background reading is coming out of Psalms chapter 23, verse 5, Psalms chapter 68, verse 8, Psalms 114, verse 7, Luke chapter 15, verse 10, Romans chapter 9, verse 11. The devotional reading is coming out of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 20 through 31. Our essential verse, I will read the King James Version first and then the New Living Translation of 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 27. Glory and honor are in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. The New Living Translation, honor and majesty surround him. Strength and joy fill his dwelling. The key terms for today's lesson, quickening, impactful blockers, quickening, to make or become alive, to begin growth and development, impactful, having a forceful impact, producing a marked impression, blockers, things or people who interrupt a process or flow. Every believer is called to the presence and purpose of God. God calls his believers to live in his presence under his authority and to his glory. The believer's purpose is the assignment God has designed for him to accomplish, or it is the problem on earth that he was sent to solve. He must start by using the tools that he already has in his hands. The word purpose means the reason something is done, created, or exists. As believers, they know that glorifying God is their ultimate purpose, but he must discover his personal purpose. The believer can find this purpose by fasting and praying and by seeking God's word and his will and by developing that close relationship with his father. The believer knows that God saved him, called him with the holy calling, not according to works, but according to his own purpose and grace. And that's 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Salvation is by grace alone and is not based on any human efforts, but based on God's gracious gift of his dear son. Sometimes the question needs to be asked, why are we alive? And then the believer needs to dig deeper into his purpose, which is the why behind his life and the calling, which is the how it can be done as he lives out his life. Next, his assignment, which is the what can be done as the believer surrenders his life to the leading of the Holy Spirit. God created each believer exactly how he wanted them and for a critically important purpose. He gave each believer unique abilities to serve him and make an impact on the world. God does not want believers to be tricked into playing the comparison game and miss his specific purpose and calling that he is just for him. He does not want the believer feeling purposeless in his life. He wants him to allow him to use him in ways that he may have never dreamed of and with a passion that he isn't aware he has. God wants him to discover, dream, and define. The believer can go from that passion to an action plan armed with biblical principles and practical strategies. He can answer that higher call and move on to being a living legacy of love and a positive impact. People can imitate someone else but the other person cannot be duplicated. Each believer must discover his own purpose and calling. Many are called, but only a few are chosen, and you have been chosen to come into the presence of God. When God calls a believer to his purpose and his presence, the believer becomes responsible to God and to man to live a life of impact and significance. God has blessed each one with gifts, talents, potentials, opportunities, and time to do what is necessary. God's plan and purpose for the believer's life is that he lives his life and meet and honor and all his expectations. It is up to the believer to allow the quickening power of the Holy Spirit to cause him to rise and live the life that God intended for him. Sometimes the believer will have to make decisions concerning his journey, even when he knows that he is walking in his assignment. He must decide if the opposition is going to be an opportunity or an excuse? Is it worth the approval of God or man? Is what he's doing bringing glory to God? Is it helping to build the kingdom of God? 
Is it being impactful to God's people? Is it building him up in God's presence? Knowing the answers to these questions is vital to determining what direction the believer's life will go. And this can be very overwhelming. Every believer should be so sure about his purpose that he can live free from anxiety and worry concerning his future. He must know that God is pleased and knows his name, loves him, is walking with him in the times of opposition. It is a time when the believer must know that he is living a life of fulfillment and fruitfulness. He must know that he's not just in God's face, but he is under God's divine influence, for he is a vessel of honor in God's kingdom, and he has true freedom and significance. Each believer's purpose calls out to him, asking him to discover and embrace his divine purpose and navigate through the obstructions of fear and self-reliance. While learning to listen to the Holy Spirit's gentle nudges, stay in the scriptures gaining power from the examples of men and women who have gone on. Let the life lessons that are learned from their triumphs and failures guide your lives as you confront your purpose blockers and allow their stories to empower you to step into the assignment that God has given you. For in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Paul is a wonderful example of a believer whose passion was misdirected. But when God showed up, he was radically changed. God forgave Paul for his past sins and then used him to be one of the greatest missionaries in the history of the early church. If God forgave Paul, he can and will forgive anyone and give them purpose. Paul was able to change the world because he allowed God to change him. Just as Paul was just living and thinking, he was doing what was right. God has many believers whose lives can be changed. God does not want the believer just living, not excelling in the area that he has called them. He wants his followers to excel, progressing, fulfilling dreams and visions, living their life to the fullest, fulfilling their purpose in his presence. The questions for today's lesson. Number one, what is purpose? Number two, how does a believer find his purpose? Number three, how does a believer's purpose impact the lives of others? And number four, what are some of the things that can block purpose from leading a believer into God's presence? Our essential thought, God wants every believer to discover his calling and fulfill his purpose but doing it in his presence. The end. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today.